to the Minding My Own Business webinar series presented by the Fremont Group. Today's webinar is Creating Powerful Pricing Tools. My name is Dirk Dieters. I'm the Executive Director of the Fremont Group. Myself, like our, all of our other success partners, have been working with small business owners for the past 25 years. There's very little you can throw at us that we haven't already seen. The Fremont Group is a nonprofit organization. We provide quality services to small business owners. Those services include management consulting, mentoring, and coaching. We also have an accounting department that can provide full service outsourced QuickBooks services to business owners and a CEO partnering division where we can literally oversee the management of your company or uh, actually run the company in times of turnaround or times of disruption. Thank you for joining us for this series. Uh, the live recording or the live uh, webinar uh, was presented to our uh, Patreon uh, uh, patrons, uh, and this is available to the first 100 uh, persons who uh, want to follow up and, and watch the recording of this webinar. Hope you will find it worthwhile and it'll give you a taste of what can be done to take your company to the next level. As a small business owner, you've taken an idea and turned it into a livelihood. You work tirelessly through the good times and the bad, but things never stay the same. Your market changes, your competitors change, your customers change, and as much as you sometimes would like to stay the same, you know that you can't. You need more powerful tools to compete in today's market. Failing to continually improve is too risky to accept. Break-even pricing can be one of these powerful tools. The Fremont Group works with business owners to provide them with the support that they need to remain competitive. In this webinar, we're going to introduce you to this one tool that you will find can make a complete difference in your company. Today, we're going to look at how pricing affects your business what pricing is, where it comes from, and how you can use it as a tool to become more competitive and compete with much larger uh, competitors in your marketplace. The myth about pricing is that you can only decrease or increase your prices to adapt to the market. First of all, if you would like to spend the time with one of our success partners, we can actually show you uh, through our spreadsheets uh, the myth of pricing. Uh, this has also had been addressed in some of our earlier webinars. But first of all, let's just put this on the table. It's almost impossible to become more profitable through a decrease in price. It's almost impossible to sell more, enough more uh, from the lower price to make up for the loss in your price. And it's also almost impossible to not come out ahead by increasing your price. In other words, you, unless you have an extremely inelastic marketplace, and we discussed that earlier, um, a price increase uh, basically falls to the bottom line. And you, it's almost impossible to lose enough sales to offset the advantage of a price increase. Decreasing your price takes that money directly off your bottom line. Increasing your price adds that money directly to your bottom line. And the adjustment in sales very rarely can compensate for that. So if we're not going to talk about increasing or decreasing your price, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about price as how it affects your business. What goes into the price of a good or service, whatever it is that you are selling? Your price equals the cost of producing the good or service, the cost of goods sold, plus whatever contribution to overhead and profit you want to make. It's as simple as that. Your price equals the cost of producing the product plus your desired contribution to overhead and profit. So what is break-even pricing? Well, let's start with what it's not. It's not pricing your goods and services to break even. 
that would be absurd. That's not why you're in business. Uh, and, uh, and what it is, though, is utilizing al overhead allocation strategies so that you can become more competitive. That's what we're going to explain and look at over the next 10 to 15 minutes. First, we have to define break even. Your break even is the amount of money that you have to bring in to pay for your overhead and your desired profit. Many people make numbers of errors in computing their break even. They want to compute it so that it simply will cover the cost of the good, for example. If you only sell products at cost of goods sold, uh, you won't be in business very long. Uh, that does not cover the required overhead, and it doesn't cover your reason for being in business when your first responsibility, which is making a desired profit. So what does go into break even? Obviously, the cost of goods sold is number one, as we said, but then your desired overhead and profit. What is the desired overhead? The desired overhead is the second place where people often make mistakes. They don't put themselves in it. Your own salary has to be included in overhead. And this is where we discuss the differences between managerial accounting and tax accounting. Your uh, tax attorney or, or CPA may very well be telling you not to take a salary or take a big salary or take a small salary, whatever, for tax purposes. That's tax accounting. Managerial accounting is separate from that. And it has both, you have to have both. Uh, in managerial accounting, the salary that you put in uh, for yourself is the amount that you would have to pay someone else to perform the tasks that you're performing for the business. Not the leadership responsibilities, but rather uh, the daily tasks and, and of management that you perform. That amount has to be included in your overhead amount. We said that price equals cost of goods sold plus allocated overhead and profit. You also have to put a minimum mandatory percentage of profit into your break even because you aren't truly break even. What you're doing is enabling yourself to operate inefficiently if you compute your break even on anything other than what it takes to properly pay the people that are doing the work be it you or someone else, and to produce the minimum amount of profit which is required for you to execute your profit plan under your budget. So once you've determined what your true break-even amount is, we need to look at how money flows through your company. What happens to the money that comes in? Every time a dollar comes into your business, it goes basically to one of those two spots. Either it goes to the cost of goods sold, or which is the uh, money that was required to simply bring, to produce the product that brought in the dollar, or it goes to your allocation of overhead and profit. That's, that's how it flows. So if it flows from into your business and into one of those two spots, you have to look, let's examine each one of those two spots. First, let's look at your cost of goods sold. Your cost of goods sold is the money that's required to produce the product, the product which brought in the dollar. It is the direct costs. You may think of it in terms of expenditures that you would not have had if you hadn't made the sale. And or as on the flip side of that, expenditures you do have because you did make the sale. That is your, if you subtract uh, your cost of goods sold uh, from 100%, you get your gross profit. So your gross profit is what is left after you pay the direct costs of producing your uh, product, good or service. So in this example, let's say your gross profit equals 55%. That means 55 cents out of every dollar that comes into your business isn't really yours to work with. It is already spent before it comes into the business because you had to produce the product. What you received was 45 cents, which is your gross profit, uh, from that uh, amount uh, that uh, you can utilize to go into overhead and profit. 
And so what we look at it as imagining a hose, and our apologies for our, our, uh, our drawings, but uh, they do exhibit uh, what we're trying to say. Uh, imagine a hose that is filling up a bucket. The bucket is your overhead. That was the number that you determined. It was a dollar amount that you determine is what it, it, uh, it takes uh, that you want to allocate for overhead and profit. Every time a dollar comes into your business, 45 cents flows through that hose and goes into that overhead bucket, filling it up. Now notice we aren't concerned with whether we're dealing with a day, a week, a month, a year. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. It's a, on a percentage and then you can compute your break even off of any of those. As we said, every dollar that comes into your business first covers the cost of goods sold. That's not your money. The second, after that, the money goes to overhead and profit. In your, our example here, you have a 45% gross profit. That means you have 45 cents out of every dollar that comes in to fall into the overhead bucket. The overhead bucket, remember, includes your salary. That fills up from those 45 cents. And once that bucket is full, the next time a dollar comes in, 45 cents falls into the second bucket, which is the profit. You see every dollar that comes in goes to one of those three places, but it does not go to your profit until the overhead bucket is full. And that is your break even point. To compute your break even, you would take your dollar amount of your overhead that you've determined, uh, be it uh, uh, a day, a week, a month, a year, it doesn't make any difference. And you would then divide it by your gross profit. Why? That tells you how many 45 cents, how many sales dollars, are required to fill the overhead bucket before you go to profit. Okay, fine. So now we have computed your break even. We know where uh, the uh, money comes in. We know the dollar goes into your company. Uh, in this case, 55 cents of it goes out uh, to the cost of goods sold. 45 cents of it is your gross profit. Every time a dollar comes in, 45 cents falls into the overhead bucket. When the overhead bucket is full, the next dollars that come in, 45 cents falls into your profit bucket. That's nice. But how do you use it and what is it worth having and why should we be paying attention to it? Well, you, to use your break-even, you really have to do th three things. First of all, you have to monitor it. You have to have uh, accurate numbers that will tell you, okay, uh, what is our, either if you want to do it on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually basis, whatever you want to do it on, uh, what is our break-even, how is it, and how is it constantly changing? How do we monitor it? at least on a weekly basis, if not on a daily basis. And when you understand um, what has gone into it, uh, then you can figure out how to reduce it. So what does go into it? Well, there's only two ways to change your break even. Either, number one, you can get a smaller overhead bucket because it'll fill up faster. Or number two, you can get a bigger hose because that'll also make it fill up faster. What is the hose? The hose is your gross profit percentage. If we could have changed the gross profit from 45% to 50%, that bucket would have filled much faster. Or if we had reduced our overhead, we could have uh, filled the bucket faster also. Either one of those affects your break even. In almost every instance, I, we very rarely uh, meet a business owner whose overhead is excessive. That there's excess, you know, a couple of lease Mercedes and a golf club membership or whatever it might be, just excessive overhead. People don't do that because they understand that uh, a dollar, you know, a dollar is not spent on overhead is a dollar more they'll make. And in, uh, in fact, uh, one of the common faults is starving your company and not having enough overhead to work effectively and profitably. And so the size of the bucket is rarely 
an issue. And you should examine whether or not expanding your, your bucket, be it additional marketing, additional personnel, or whatever it might be, actually uh, would help generate more sales. And then what you need to, to really focus upon is your gross profit. There's probably very few um, key profit indicators more important to any small business owner that, than their uh, gross profit percentage. And that needs to be monitored constantly. And so then you develop and implement strategies to control your uh, break even. And you can do your break even in a couple different ways, okay? After you get that, that amount, you can figure it as a percentage of your sales and then multiply it by 365 to see how many days it's taking you to get to break even. Uh, you can simply do it on a, on a dollar amount or hourly, monthly, daily. There's, there's lots of different ways uh, that you can do it. And when you work with one of our success partners, we uh, try to pick out the way that it has the most meaning to you so that you will understand it, so that you will understand how to reduce it, and so that you will develop and implement strategies to control it. If you don't implement, everything else is worthless. So now we're going to get to the part that is really the reason for the webinar. How can you use your break even in pricing? What is that relationship that you can utilize that can take your business to another level? What I will absolutely guarantee you is if you have a large corporate competitor, they are doing it and you are at a disadvantage. And if you, the expression is, if you want to run with the big dogs, you've got to get off the porch. And that's what we're going to show you how to do in these next slides. Break even pricing is really the implementation of overhead allocation strategies. Nice big words, an overhead allocation strategy. What is your company's overhead allocation strategy? Well, it relates first to your different profit centers. Most every business has different profit centers. For example, a contractor may have uh, uh, three different profit centers. They may be uh, uh, new construction, uh, might be uh, repair, and it might be service. Those are three different profit centers. Why are they different? Because they each have different gross profits to them and they have different uh, levels of uh, uh, consistency of income. So let's take a look at our, uh, well, there's a, a store that we deal with that has uh, at least two profit centers that we, and we're creating a third, uh, and that is uh, uh, their retail sales and uh, their uh, uh, framing uh, work that they do. They're, they're an art store. Um, and they may also be creating a third profit center for online sales. So look at how you have different profit centers based upon your different functions if they have different gross profits. In creating a budget for your company, this is important. Actually, what you have to have are different budgets for each different profit center so that you can profitably price. And then they all flow together or up or down, depending on how you look at it, uh, to your overall company uh, budget. So how do you utilize your profit centers uh, in your overhead allocation strategy? Well, uh, let's toss some couple little numbers into it. Let's say profit center number one has a 55% gross profit, profit center number two has a 40% gross profit center, and profit number three has a 60% profit center, uh, gross profit in its profit center. Um, you don't have to allocate overhead for in, the, in the case of pricing based upon how much each profit center actually consumes. I've seen wild machinations and arguments and, and companies torn apart even at times when uh, owners have tried to allocate overhead based upon use. Um, the uh, uh, department A, oh, that, that, we should only get this percentage of the phone bill and we shouldn't get that or you should get this. And, and oftentimes the heads of those departments can end up actually making uh, more money for themselves or make themselves look better 
by arguing uh, overhead allocation rather than uh, their own profitability. Uh, that's something that you need to eliminate and should not be done. How do you over how do you allocate your overhead? Well, um, you can make an estimate and put it out there for starters, and that's not a bad way to go. But then we want to use it in a pricing strategy. So, for example, let's say you have a profit center that is very consistent. You know where it is. Uh, you have a um, uh, well. Let's go to the contractor. Let's say he's doing service work. It's it's quite profitable. It's fairly consistent work. Blah blah blah. So he might allocate a hundred percent of his overhead to that profit center. Figure out his pricing for it because he knows he can get it. He knows it'll be there, and he knows now that a hundred percent of his overhead is paid each month, day, year, wherever they're doing it on, um, from the activity of his service. So then when he goes to bid new construction, he knows his overhead is already completely covered. And he can be much more competitive in his bidding of uh, new construction. Uh, why would he want, you know, uh, or uh, uh, let, let, let's, you could take that uh, to uh, a lot of different uh, areas. Now, this is what larger corporations do to put you out of business. Um, let's say you're selling widgets and some big department store also sells widgets and a thousand other things. Well, they know you have to sell them at a certain price. Well, what they can do is allocate their overhead into other areas that they know are consistently taken care of. They know they're going to be fine and they can lower their price down below yours and you're going to lose unless you are able to compete back with them. Chances are, chances are actually very good that you can actually beat the larger competitor if you accurately and properly handle an overhead allocation strategy. And so remember, your price is based upon the cost of goods sold plus the overhead that's allocated. And so um, that will can often allow you to even beat the larger store. So um, that's how you can utilize your profit centers with your break even by allocating overhead. Remember that your price equals the cost of goods sold, which is going to be whatever the gross, uh, well, the one minus the gross profit from uh, your, your uh, goods or service, plus the contribution to overhead and profit that you allocate. Now you are actually running the company and creating strategies to do so. You're not just marking things up and seeing what happens. Uh, the contractor who does uh, uh, some things subcontracted and some things uh, uh, themselves uh, have different profit centers. Uh, the uh, all everyone has um, not everyone, but virtually all businesses do have more than one profit center, and you can create strategies that use your your break even and overhead allocation. But here's a word of warning. Don't try to use break-even pricing until number one, you have actual, actual control of your break-even. You know what your company's break-even is. You have dealt with it. You are, you are uh, uh, monitoring it and it's there. And number two, that you have accurate numbers. You have to have accurate numbers uh, <coughs> or you could be shooting yourself in the foot. And then thirdly, uh, you need to or want to do it for a specific marketing strategy. There's no sense in lowering a price if you don't have to, but you can use it for market penetration in one of your profit centers and then eventually raise it back up. Or you can not do it, not use it, and simply uh, supercharge your, your projected profit. Either way, you need to have controls on it and you need to know what you're doing before you try it. Because as we said earlier, anytime you just lower your price, you're asking for trouble. Hopefully now you can see the benefits of break-even pricing. Intuitively, you're probably doing some of this already, but without help, you may or not be utilizing this powerful tool anywhere near its maximum effectiveness. 
And if you want to maintain the edge in business, which is getting tighter and tighter, you need better and better tools. The success partners of the Fremont Group guide you through this powerful tool. It takes you to an entirely different level where you can truly compete more effectively in the marketplace. We start with an exploratory consultation done at no charge by Zoom. This is followed up with an initial consultation completed on your site uh, to, so that we can meet you and your company. The initial consultation produces an action plan, which is implemented through Zoom sessions. It may include break-even pricing and other many other items. Uh, through, including in the Zoom sessions, we also, on occasion, will make an additional site follow-up if it's requested. Every week, however, you and your business receive the benefit of ongoing focus and improvement. A week should never go by when you don't have contact with your success partner so that uh, the things that you're implementing uh, actually happen. As I, we said earlier, um, if you don't implement it, it's worthless. And only through the consistent follow-up with your success partner can things really change. Thank you for visiting our webinar. Again, my name is Dirk Dieters. I'm the executive director of the Fremont Group. We are a nonprofit organization that take businesses to the next level. We provide mentoring, coaching, uh, management consulting. We have accounting divisions, uh, CEO partnering, and, and other services. And as a nonprofit, we are a fraction of the cost of the private for-profit corporations out there that are trying to sell you thousands and thousands of dollars of consulting without the follow-up. Go to tfginfo.org. That's our website. You'll find out more about us there and how we work. At the bottom of the homepage there, you can sign up for our free exploratory consultation. The exploratory consultation is a 45-minute Zoom meeting where we use our proprietary materials to, buy, to compare your management of your company and your strengths and weaknesses against national norms and also to determine which areas you could benefit the most from dealing with. The website also has lots of other materials and a link to our blog at our Patreon site, which you are at right now because that's where you picked this up. Uh, you can give us a call anytime. We hope to we want to hear from you and we will talk to anybody. 303-338-9300. Uh, our company motto is you only have what you give. It's by giving of yourself that you grow rich. And we're willing to give of ourselves. We want to help you. Uh, you can email us at admin at tfginfo.org. Again, I hope you have found this helpful. Uh, please visit our website, find out more about the Fremont Group. And we would like to hear from you and we'd like to make a difference in your business. Have a good day.